Hey guys, so I wanted to do a quick video on how I treat my water uh, for my orchids because we just had a desal plant come online here where I live and it actually changed uh, the TDS of our water quite a bit. Uh, we had really, really hard water. Now we only have medium hard water, I think. Um, so let me just finish uh, filling this up like I was going to do. Um, so previously the TDS was around 490 parts per million. And now, uh, you can see I'm going to measure it for you right now. I think it's around um, 260, I want to say. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's even reading less now. So this is coming up. It's reading 214, 215. So it's about half uh, the hardness that it was before, half the TDS. Um, and another thing that this got me paying attention to was the pH, which I should have been paying attention to all along. But I, I thought, you know, when you just... When you water your plants, water is water and doesn't matter. Uh, and that turns out, I think that's definitely not true. Um, I have some plants that I'll show you in a little bit here that I think have some uh, root burns from this. Um, so let me show you really quick uh, the pH of this water that just came out of the tap is quite high. Um, so orchids like pH in a range of 5.5 to 6.5 uh, and this is just too alkaline for them. Um, so there's a couple of things we can do and of course I think probably most growers probably do use things like this pH down uh, to lower the pH into an acceptable range. This stuff is good, it works, um, it's really sensitive so for me if I add, I have to add exactly two drops of that stuff to a gallon of this water uh, or it shoots the pH way down below 5.5. Uh, and yeah, that's no good either. So uh, you can add it to water and then add it, um, you know, if you overdose the water, just dump out some of the water and don't dump all of that in your main bucket. But in any case, uh, I found something else and my boyfriend actually was looking online and found something uh, because I also was leaving my water out for 12 to 24 hours to have chlorine evaporate off. They add chlorine to our water uh, chlorine and chloramine, uh, they add to our water to disinfect it and get rid of bacteria. Um, so the problem is though, is plants don't like that. That's, it's not good for them. So, um, w the link that we found actually had said that you could actually add ascorbic acid, uh, to your water and it would, uh, neutralize chlorine and chloramine. So you could leave your water out and the chlorine should evaporate off, I think anywhere 12 to 24 hours, but the chloramine will not. Um, so this though will actually get rid of that and so I'm going to show you something now. Uh, so this is on a page that I'm going to um, link below but basically I'm just doing some math here based on uh, what that page said for how much chlorine or how much uh, ascorbic acid to add to water that has a certain amount of chloramine in it. Um, so my water report showed that I had an average of 0.55 milligrams per liter of chlorine and, uh, you know, then it just gave a range, you know, saying that the, the max that they measured anywhere in the system was 1.82 milligrams per liter. So I just, um, based on the page that I'm going to link below, um, did some math because uh, they said that basically it takes uh, 7.5 milligrams per liter of vitamin C to remove 3 milligrams per liter of chloramine. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I just did some math and it turns out that for me to neutralize uh, that point. 0.55 milligrams per liter of chloramine, uh, I'll need 5.2 milligrams per gallon of water uh, of ascorbic acid. So um, that's actually a super tiny amount, like really difficult to measure tiny amount. Um, and so between the pH and adding ascorbic acid and knowing that it neutralizes uh, the chloramine, I decided, you know what, I'm going to just try adding more vitamin C to bring the pH into a range that's acceptable for my plants and um, see how that does. Um, I did some research on the vitamin C, which I'll tell you in a second, but uh, really quick, the last thing I wanted to show you was just the reaction um, that I wrote out here. And again, this is just in a link that I'll put in the description below. But uh, when you add ascorbic acid to uh, chloramine, uh, you get out ammonium, chloride, and dehydroscorbic acid. And the thing is, is since like I showed up here, the amounts that we're adding, uh, the, the amount of chloramine in the system is so small. Um, these, the amounts of uh, the concentrations of what the resulting um, compounds are here are 
just negligible. Um, so just to, to mention that. And then uh, I looked up uh, some information on vitamin C. And uh, it's essential to plant life. Uh, and it actually uh, regulates cell division and growth. So um, I, I found nothing really but good things about it. I'm sure anything in too much of a concentration is a bad thing. Uh, that's true for all things in life, but we're not adding very much here. And so far I've seen really good results with this, so I wanted to share it with you. Okay, so uh, first things first. Um, oh yeah, we measure the pH. So then I just wanted to show you uh, the uh, chlorine levels. Um, in our water. So here are the chlorine strips that I'm going to use. So these test for total chlorine and free chlorine. So it'll test for chlorine and chloramine. So right now um, I'm just going to go ahead and take one of these strips that's been unused and I'm going to dip it in here and it says uh, we need to wait for 30 seconds. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll be back and show you the results. Okay I'm back and after about 30 seconds uh, you can definitely see that we've got some purple going on there. Um, looks like it's reading anywhere between 1 and 2 uh, ppm. Um, so that's it's close to what it looks like the maximum they reported on um, the water report for my town. Uh, so let's go ahead then and add some uh, ascorbic acid. Now to neutralize this, uh, like I said, I only need a small amount, but I'm adding a little bit more to bring the pH down um, to a level where uh, it's in the range that I know uh, orchids would prefer it. So um, let me just go ahead and do that now. If I can get the right amount of it. So this is about a, a sixteenth of a teaspoon that I'm adding to a gallon of water. Um, let me go ahead and mix this up and make sure it dissolves. And then I'm going to do two things. I'm going to I'm going to read the pH. <clears throat> And uh, we're going to test the chlorine as well. So here, let's just check the pH. Just sw swiggle it around a little bit. Um, so there, now it's now it's reading around 6.1, um, and it's within the range where my plants will be much happier with it. So and then now. Uh, I'm just going to test it for uh, chlorine and chloramine again. So I'm going to dip this little strip in here. I'm going to do this for about 30 seconds and be back and show you the results. Okay, I'm back and after about 30 seconds you can see that I am showing white on both strips here, which according to this means zero parts per million of both chloramine and chlorine. Um, so we definitely did neutralize the chloramine and chlorine by adding the ascorbic acid. Um, and I just wanted to show you some of the plants that I have because uh, they're doing quite a lot better. Um, since I got these, uh, when I got this, the, the roots on this guy were, uh, were green and now they're, they're quite black. Um, as you can see in this picture, they're kind of the same color as the basket, except I have some new roots growing here and you can almost see this one. It was a stub of a, of a burned root and it's now growing a really nice um, green tip on it here. And then I got another one going right there. Um, so this guy is uh, Rinko Reedy's Bangkok Sunset, actually. Um, so yeah, that's that guy. And then here I have a Rinko Stillis Gigantea Orange. And you can see some of its roots, the previous roots, were kind of brown, black, uh, various shades of burn um, and now again I have these new roots that are growing uh, like here's one if I can move this brand new green root tip there and another one over here uh, so these are all doing really well and, and really liking this and then I have a couple more over here I mean a lot of my plants are reacting like this I'm just showing you a couple of them so there's some night root, nice root growth there and uh, this guy here has got a got a root down in there that you can kinda see I think in the crevice there. There it is. So yeah, uh, a lot of my orchids are doing much better since I started doing this uh, in terms of root growth and I'm just starting to see some of them bounce back after bringing the pH into a range that they like and getting rid of the chlorine and chloramine in the water. So um, I'm hoping that this helps some people that were like me thinking water was just water. Uh, 
And yeah, hopefully if you try this, uh, your plants will like it just as much as mine did. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.